Yo, what's up? Okay, this video I made for you is gonna go into a stat sheet for a remote sales team. So if you have setters, closers, appointment setters, SDRs, if you have sales reps and you don't have some form of data tracking that you're using to assess the quantitative, there's qualitative as well, but quantitative inputs in the performance of your team, this video is for you because I have a free copy of the stat sheet that I show you that we've been using to manage hundreds of sales reps and you can make a copy of it, put it in your business today and you can make sure that you're tracking the right stuff. I'm gonna go through how to use that right now. Hey, my name is Taylor and I make these videos because we want to document the actual business practices that are working, and then we wanna give them to you full free. So you can actually go to the salesmachine.net slash free resources, okay? Slash free resources, there might be a link here somewhere as well. We're creating a, a whole Rolodex of resources, tools, videos, of business practices that we have found to scale multiple seven figure businesses that you can use and put into your business today. So let's get into this video. Why should you have a stat tracking sheet? If you are not tracking the data of your sales team and their performance, who are you? No, I'm just kidding. I know some of you are not geared towards data and Excel and all that kind of stuff, which is why this resource probably will help you a lot but you wanna know that you're looking and assessing the right stuff with your team. So let me show you. And I'm gonna make sure you can see me still. Um, and I wanna go through uh, this, this uh, stat sheet with you guys. So you can see here, if you have setters and closers, the tabs down at the bottom, this is a setter stat tracking sheet. And then you've got your closer stat tracking sheets, okay? And there's obviously some different KPIs and different numbers that you wanna track. Now for a setter, you do on a daily basis wanna see how many hours they've clocked. And then there's a few buckets here. You wanna collect how many new leads did they touch? So new outreach would be not people they're following up with because those aren't new. These are new leads that they're touching, new leads that they're calling, new leads that they emailed, new leads that they DM'd or texted. So new outreach, how many new leads did they outreach to? And then active conversations would be they engaged. So they picked up the phone, they responded in DM, they responded in email, they responded in text. So there's an active conversation um, that day. So how many active convos did they have that day? So how many different active conversations did they have that day? Sets would be they worked that lead, used their sales process to qualify and set the appointment. So how many sets did they actually put on the calendar? So how many did they put on the calendar for the closers? That would be sets. Closed sets obviously is, okay, they booked someone on the closer calendar and that person closed. So that gets attributed back to them. And then what was the cash collected at point of sale with the closer so we can attribute cash back to the setter. And then this will auto fill for you guys. So this side you fill in on a daily basis. You can train the setter to input their own data and you can use the CRM that you're using like close or Salesforce, whatever you're using. They input their data. Now your sales manager is gonna wanna periodically check that they're not smudging their numbers because we want honest people and if you find that you have a rep smudging their numbers deliberately, that person's gotta go, obviously, okay? Um, but most of the time, they're not filling it in correctly because they just don't know, and they need more direction, and they just need help. Uh, people, when you're managing people, and this you can see this in other videos, you need to repeat yourself constantly for people to really understand what you need them to do. This is your key KPI, okay, for a setter. You could do dials per hour or dials per day. I recommend though from productivity because hey, a person can call a bunch of people instead of a, a bunch of appointments, but if those appointments aren't closing, it's because the quality of the set sucks. So I recommend you track revenue per hour and you have a KPI in place, right? So this is the measurable, and you can see this in other videos where we talk about every person in your business has a measurable. That way there's clear accountability for both parties. There's a measurable 
for every person. But when this is in place, let's say based on your offer and in industry, the revenue per hour you want to see from a rep is $150 an hour. That's good to know because if you are paying them 20, 30, 40 an hour, you need to know what your return on investment is per rep. And you'll start to notice, wow, Jackie sets a lot of calls, but not a lot of them close. Huh, there must be an issue with how she's qualified. Or, huh, someone gets a lot of closed sets, but their productivity really sucks. Interesting. So, you, with revenue per hour, this is where like, well, so-and-so's closing really good. Yeah, um, but did you see how much hour, how many hours they're putting in to have the high closing? You know, there, there could be a discrepancy going on where it's like, well, it's, it's great to have 100% closing when you only did two hours of calls. And does that really matter? So revenue per hour is what I recommend there. Now let's go into the closer stat sheets. So for a closer, what you'd wanna see is calls booked. So this would be new appointments in the calendar. Now I do have sales reps track cancellations versus ghost because I want to know if they're doing a good job triaging and trying to confirm appointments and they just never hear back, well, that would be a lead quality issue and I wanna see like, wow, we have a lot of ghosted leads happening. There must be a lead quality or like a funnel issue potentially going on. So calls booked, how many canceled, how many ghosted, and then how many actually showed, and then how many did they present? Because depending on your sales process, you know, you, you might have a showed call, but they're not qualified upon further conversation and so you don't even present the offer. So that's why we do track presentation as well. And then closes should be pretty self-explanatory. Then what we see the three main stuff is your show rate for the day, close rate for the day, and then overall close, which includes the show rate, okay? And obviously guys, you don't want to, like if a person has two or three days where their numbers are bad, that's not enough data to make an assumption of what's going on. I usually look at a week at a time but I do wanna look at specific days to ever notice if there's a pattern. So that's why we look month to date here at the bottom, but then I do wanna see on a daily basis just to see if there's a pattern going on. Maybe you guys made a shift to the funnel on a particular day, or you guys gave an improvement plan and they're back on the calendar starting a certain day. Now, what you'll notice on this right side is the type of objection they got. The three main ones that we look at are delay, which we think about it, let me get back to you, money objection, which is budget, too expensive, I don't have the cash for it, and then partner objection, which if it's B2C, spouse, if it's B2B, it could be business partner or another decision maker. I like tracking that because I wanna see, oh, Joe gets a bunch of delay objections. Okay, we know exactly what we need to train for Joe because most of his objections he's getting is think about it. And if you believe, which you should, that most objections are triggered by the sales rep, you can start to create a pattern of like, okay, this rep just needs to work on objection handling versus this rep needs to work on spouse objections. And then when you drill and train on that specific objection for two, three, four weeks, and you start to notice that they stop getting those, well, their closes are gonna go up because that was the main one that they were triggering. Now here's the most important part is your team totals. And there's a few different areas I like to track. We wanna see the team closing scorecard. So the team total calls booked, showed, what's the show rate, presentations, closes, which what's the total pitched close rate, and then the overall closing percentage, okay? So we wanna see those numbers. Then we wanna see the blend of the day, okay? The whole team, how did they do this day? The whole team, how did they do this day, right? Then over here, you've got your acquisition health. So what will happen is you guys can update your ad spend and your blended call cost as often as you want. And based on the closing percentage, you guys will be able to see, well down here, I'm gonna explain this, but you'll see your total cash collected and you'll also see your average cash collected at point of sale, but then you'll be able to see your acquisition cost. And then you've got your team snapshot and rep profitability. So let me explain though this clients at point of sale down here. What you guys should be tracking somewhere, and I like to just put it on this sheet, 
is when you have a close, the rep puts their name, the client name who closed, and the cash collected at point of sale. So if you guys do a 5K a month recurring product, then you would put 5K. If you guys do a paid in full that's 12K versus a payment plan that's 4K, then you put 4K or 12K. But we wanna see what is the total cash collected in new sales, and we wanna see what's our average cash collected at point of sale. We wanna track that number because that will directly affect if your cash flow positive based on the acquisition cost. Because then you can see, well, it costs us you know, $2,500 to get a customer, but our average cash collected at point of sale is 5K. So we're actually cash flowing $2,500 every new sale and every new person we bring into the business, which would be healthy. Versus if you're compressing that margin and your customer acquisition cost is getting close to the cash collect that point of sale, well, you're gonna start to have issues and now you can't scale. So there's a lot of things that you can look at there. Plus with your average cash collected at point of sale, you guys can see like, huh, okay, we're getting a good amount of paid in full. So that's great. That means the sales team is closing strongly. If you're seeing a lot of payment plans or financing and not a lot of paid in fulls, there's a sales training issue. Your guys need to train more. And then over here is the team snapshot where you can just go into the team totals. Let's say you have a larger team and you can see, all right, closer one, his goal is this. Here's where he's at month to date. Here's his, his closing percentages. And then here's the cash he's collected. And then we're tracking for rep profitability, guys, you track revenue per call. Because some reps can be like, well, I'm closing 80%. Okay, yeah, but you're only counting a close because you know, you had two calls before you disqualify a bunch of people. And so your closing percentage is high, but you only had five sales, right? So that's a problem. So revenue per call is again, the, the other, I think most important KPI for a closer, because it really shows how profitable they're gonna be. So it's, it's important to understand, okay, we're, we're paying our sales reps to generate revenue. That's great, you should, it should be incentivized, but they also have to be productive based on what it costs you in the business to send leads to their calendar. Hopefully this was helpful and maybe even eye-opening, or you're like, duh, this is exactly what we track and what we do, and this is exactly how we make data-driven decisions. Fantastic, I just wasted my time. But hopefully, at least in my experience with consulting and helping different businesses, this is extremely useful. So if you got value from this, go to the link and get this free resource so you can put a proper stat tracking sheet into your business. Subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. And there may be another video to check out so you can continue the rabbit trail to help move your business and grow your business. Mm -hmm.